morning. How is everybody? Good. All right. Good deal. Well, welcome. Louise Burke, Nazarene Church. Welcome to service. I just want to start off, if we'll go ahead and stand, I just want to start off with saying uh, my wife and I thank our church, our church family, for everything they've done. It's just been a real blessing. Um, you guys have been great, and we appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Let's all begin our service. <laughs> Of the king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God in three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above. Savior God, 
September 29th, that's next week, is that right? Already? Man, next Sunday, there's, we're going to have a zone service in, at the Church in Liberty where all 10 churches on Richmond Zone is going to get together. Here, do I ask you all to do a lot of things for me? I mean, you know, I, I ask you, hey, if you can make it come to church, right? And, and so I'm going to ask you, please, please, please consider this because this is going to be awesome. Come and be with us that day. Meet here. We're going, to, we're going to pile up at the van. Or if we need to we need to carpool, people can carpool as well. But we're going to leave this parking lot at 5 o'clock next Sunday evening. Okay, Come and be part of it. You will be blessed. The music will be absolutely amazing. New Life Band, they were here a while back, if you remember, when we had, we had a big uh, Sunday evening service. They were here. And if their music does not make you get up and clap, then... The, you need to come pray. 
Amen. So you're going to have an awesome time. It's going to be an amazing message. I'm not going to give it. Woo! So it's going to be really, really good. But it's going to be great. There's, there's a time of fellowship afterwards. And the pastor at Liberty Nazarene, because I talked to him this week, I said, what do you need us to bring? He said, nothing. we got to cover I said, you're my kind of guy. But, come on, but, you know, I said, well, how about like cookies? So if you want to make cookies or something like that and bring, that would be, that would be good. That's next Sunday. Please, 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 please come. I don't want you to come for me. I want you to come because, because I'll beg you to come. I'm not, I'm not beyond that. But I want you to come because it will bless you. And it will be an amazing, amazing service. We're leaving the parking lot here at 5 o'clock. If, if you can't get to the church, let us know. We'll make sure that you get here. Our offer box is in the back. It's always behind the earth. By the double doors under the clock. Thank you so much for your giving. We do appreciate all that you do in that respect. Because you give, we are able to do things that we do. Amen, church? Amen. Get your connection card out and go ahead and write down everyone who's here and your family. Don't forget your prayer requests as well. We'll have a, if Alan and Darren, if he wants to do this side, that'd be awesome. And we've got more of these. So if you've got more than one friend that you want to invite, and I hope that you do, I've got more of these little cards. I'm going to set them right here in the front so you can come and pick them up after service. And do not forget, I almost forgot this. After service, we're having a dinner out here. Uh, and for all everyone who's in, in the children's department, whether it's nursery, NAS kids, and the youth department, teen department, we're having, we're having a, a thank you luncheon, if you will, and also some training. So you'll want to come to that. Or maybe you're like, well, I'm not in that, but I, maybe I want to be one day. Well, come and eat with us and hang out with us. We're going to do a little bit of training as well, and so it'll be a good time uh, for you to do that. Do you trust in God? Yeah. Man, we say it, but do we really? I mean, I mean, let's think about that. In this song that we're getting ready to sing, think about the words. Don't just sing the words, but let them sink, sink in. Let them go deep in your heart and your soul. If you're able, stand this morning. Father God, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you that you are amazing and that you are in this place with us, Father. Right now, as we sing this next song and the songs after God, we are just praying, Lord, that, that as we sing, God, may we just understand the words that we're singing. And may we just lean on you even more today. Thank you, God, that you have never failed and you will never fail us, Father. We can trust you 100%. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine, he's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time, born of his spirit, washed in his blood, and what he did for me on Calvary, it's more than trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never never fail. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story. This is my song, I'm praising my risen King and Savior 
all the day long. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. The devil does not. Oh, Lord, as promised. 
write that down on your on your uh, notes here. Yes. pray for James right now. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and, and, and we want to, want to, first of all, thank you for James and Trace and their family, God, and how we love them. And Lord, we're lifting James up to you right now, Father, that you go right there. You know exactly what his body's gone through, Lord. You know exactly what he needs at this moment, Father. We pray for wisdom, and God, we pray for peace and for calm and for, and for his physical uh, illnesses to just really cease in Jesus' name. You're the only one who can do that, God. We pray that, Father, in your mighty name, that they would feel your presence right now. Amen. 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 Yeah, tell her we, we pray for her and we will continue. Pray for them and the family. You know, go ahead. Was somebody going to say something? Okay, I didn't want to interrupt nobody. Um, we've been talking in our in our message series here. We've been talking about discover the power of the focused life and and today we're talking about one love. And I don't know how far I'm going to get into this message because, man, I, I mean, you, you'll, you'll understand it here in a moment. But the one characteristic that separates us, when I say us, Jesus followers, Christianity, if you will, that separates it from all other religions and ideology is love. It really does. We, we serve a God who came and died for us. Many other religions, they want you to die for their small as you God. Our God died for us. He showed us what love is. And in and, 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 and that number one characteristic of Christianity, of, of Jesus' followers, is love. And we need to understand our first love because when, here's what happens a lot of times, it seems like in our age. A preacher will get up and he'll start talking about love and how we are to love each, uh, everyone, and we are. And, 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 but but they, they never really get into the first priority of our love. Did you know that your number one priority is not to each other? Did you realize that? Well, my, your number one love is not to your spouse, it's not to your family, not to your church. That's not your number one love. According to the Word of God, your number one love is to Him. And, and, and Jesus was teaching one day, and, and one of the teachers of the law, I believe was, came to him, and, and, and they asked him this question. They said, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? If you could sum up all your teachings and just put it into one or two sentences, something that, would, that you could put on a t-shirt, Jesus, what would it be? What's that one thing? What's the greatest commandment? What is all of your life, what is it all about? And Jesus answered me. He said this. He said, the most important one. And then he said, hear, O Israel. In other words, he's like, hey, y'all need to listen up because I'm getting ready to lay on you the most important commandment you will ever hear in your life. Jesus said, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And here it is. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. You realize if we get that down, and now I've said this before, and you're going to hear me say it often, if we get this down, everything else in your life will fall into place, it will fall into order. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean you're going to have a perfect life. But if you can do this, everything else will be in the position that it should be in. Okay? If you can love God with everything you have, your life will have order to it. I'm going to ask you a question that I want you to answer. It. Okay? What are some things in our life, and maybe your life, or maybe someone else's life, but I want you to answer this out loud so, so we can all hear. What are some things in your life or others' lives, as we look at the world, what are some things in people's lives that, that keep them from doing the greatest commandment, that keep them from loving God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, with everything they have? What are those things that keep people from doing that? Someone answer. What, what's some answers out there? Anger. Pride. Pride. Did somebody say anger? 
What else? Well, it's got to be more than that. It's five and eight. Spite. Spite? Self-centeredness. Jealousy. Guilt. Hate. Unbelief. Revenge. Love of money. Jesus said the most important thing that you can do, talking to us, especially if you're a Jesus follower, must. This is not a suggestion. This is a commandment. It's not a suggestion. Jesus commanded us that we are to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. With everything that we have. And if we can do that, our life will have order. It will have peace. It, there's going to be bumps in the road. We get it. We understand it. It's still life, right? The, the enemy is still throwing his arrows at us. There's still going to be those times when, when, when someone just pulls the rug out from underneath you and, and you just don't know where that's coming from and, and you swing and you miss the curveball and you're like, ah. There's going to be those moments. But if we can do this, I can promise you're going to be just fine. Whatever life throws at you. I'm kind of stuck in a position to where how can we get one another? How, how can we spur on one another? How can we move each other so we can do this? Because we say amen. Preach it, preacher. You're right. I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and everything that I have, but our life doesn't play that out. Can I be honest with you for a minute? I'm, I'm not getting on you. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, when, when, I, when I'm talking about church, I'm talking big C. I'm talking about church in the world. There are, the Bible says, I mean, there's a lot of people who come to church every every Sunday. Not 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 our church, but I'm talking to other churches. And, and Jesus, at, at the judgment day, he's going to say, I don't know you. Just because you come to church doesn't make you a Christian, right? Doesn't make you a Jesus follower. If you are a true Jesus follower, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you do that, everything else will fall into place. I promise you. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But everything will fall into place. Jesus, he said, he said there, there, there's a second one that, that I cannot separate from this one. And, we, and when we hear this and we see this and we're like, hey man, preach it on brother, but do our lives bear the fruit of it? I'll let you answer that. But Jesus, he said, there's something else that I've got to add to this greatest commandment. And it is this. He said, the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. We usually drop the ball there, don't we? Yeah. I, I've done it. He says, there is no commandment, none greater than these. That's why that's called the great commandment. If, 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 a, if a church, if we can get down the great commandment and the great commission, man, whoo, watch out, world. But in order to do this right there, in order to love your neighbor as yourself, you have to do that first. You have to. Because you can't love Jesus. Let me, let me, you can't love others as yourself unless you have Jesus in you. I believe that 100%. I can't love you like Jesus loves you unless I have Jesus in me. That's what, that's what, that's what Jesus says here. But if we could get this down, what could we do? In your circle of influence, and we all have it, if we could do this, what would your circle of influence look like? Because if we do this, that's automatic. That's automatic if we, if we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because he will give you that love that only he can give you. It doesn't mean we have to be best friends with everyone and we accept everyone. We, or I should say we accept their lifestyle. It's not saying that. And when Jesus says that we should love everyone, he's not telling you these are the feelings I want you to have. 
Jesus says, this is the action I want you to take. You see the difference there? And in our society, we, we look at love and it's a feeling, it's an emotion. Jesus looks at love and he says, it's an action. It's how we treat each other. It's what we do. It's going the extra mile for someone. It, it, it is putting someone in, in, in place of you or above you. You know, a pastor friend of mine and, and I were talking and, and he said this, he said, and, and, and we, we talked about all kinds of subjects and, and it's great when you have a, a pastor friend and you can do that. And, and he said, you know, he said, he said, uh, people are often Jesus followers until it's inconvenient for them. Whoa. What's that mean? That means that loving Jesus with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let me just go through these points. If we love Jesus with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that will allow us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if I love my neighbor as myself, in other words, if we love one another, this is what is required of us. Number one is what? Loving one another requires that you open your eyes. It requires that you open your eyes. We've got to open our eyes when we love one another. Let me read this real quick. I want to read this because this is good. It's in 1 John. I've got it in my Bible here. You've got 1 John in your Bible as well. Your phone or whatever it is. 1 John chapter 3, 11 through 18. It says this. There we go. For this is the message you have heard from the, from the beginning. We should love one another. John says, do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. That's not nothing we don't know. We've experienced that happening, church. We know that we have passed from death to life. We have passed from sin to eternal life. Because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. What is love? Here's what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees their brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can that? How can the love of God be in that person? And here we go. Dear children, let us love with words. Let us not love. Let me get that right. Let us not love with words or speech. Let us not love with emotion and feeling, but what? But with actions and in truth. Our society tells us that love, love is an emotion, and we get it, we understand that. But Jesus is talking about uh, the love of his. Jesus compels us, moves us to put that love into action. He says, this is what I want you to do. Love one another. So loving one another requires you to open your eyes to the fact that loving one another, it's not a suggestion. Jesus commands us love one another in the great commandment. And how can we do that? Only if we love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Loving one another requires that you take action. It requires that you take action. We do not enable people, but we want to help people. Jesus is saying, if you, if you see someone in need and you are able to help them, here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, hey, oftentimes, here's what we do. And I say we because I've done it. Uh, maybe you've done it before, maybe you haven't. But you come up to someone and you go, I hate what you're going through. You'll be in my thoughts and prayers. Have you ever said that to anyone? Have you ever had that said to you? First of all, when, once when you know, I don't tell them, I say thank you. But it's like, well, being in your thoughts, you're going to do nothing. <laughs> Thanks for thinking of me, though. But your prayers, I'll take them, right? Jesus is saying we need to move beyond that. 
If someone is looking for a job, absolutely pray for them. You want to do that? Yes. But maybe, just maybe, you can make a phone call because you might know somebody who knows somebody who can help them out. Do you see how that, that, the, the love of Jesus compels us and it, it moves us forward? It, it makes love become less of a feeling and more of an action. It, you know, I hope you understand what I say when I mean that. It, it compels us to move on that feeling of love. How's that? Maybe that'll make it better understandable. Maybe someone is sick and, 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 and we can all get together and we can bring meals to them. Amen, church? You've all been doing amazing in that. Why? Because the Jesus' love in us compels us to move. If we really love one another, we want to help them out when we can. That's what Jesus is saying. When, and he says, hey, if you see someone in a situation, you can help them up out of that situation. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Amen, church? Love is expressed through the things we do. I can tell you all day long that I love you. And I do. But man, when, when you prove that love by being there, by, by helping them, by, by doing something, that's even that much more, I think. Loving one another requires that you make a sacrifice. We have to sacrifice for each other. And y'all have done that plenty of times. I love Mother Teresa's definition of sacrifice. And, and, and any, anytime I can, I, can, I can say something that Mother Teresa said, it makes me sound smarter. Amen, sir. Love Mother Teresa. And by the way, I love saying this about Mother Teresa. Do you realize that she is not in heaven because of all the good that she done? Do you realize that? You can. We probably can't name one person who's done more good than Mother Teresa. She's not in heaven because of all the good she's done. She's in heaven because she has a relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And because of that relationship, she's done more good than maybe any person on earth. I don't know, man. It's, it, she's up there, isn't she? But I love what she says about sacrifice. And, and, and it's the same definition that I use. And she said, a sacrifice is giving until it hurts. Giving until it hurts. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. That's a sacrifice. Why? Because he didn't have to. He could have called angels at any moment. He didn't have to lay down his life for us, but he did. That's called a sacrifice. It reminds me of a story. And you've probably heard this before. I've probably used it before. It's a story of the, of the chicken and the pig. Have you, have you heard that one? And, and, and they said, people of Williamsburg, Nazareth, they're such great people. We should do something for them. And the pig and the chicken, they, they, oh, that sounds, the pig's like, that sounds great. What can we do? I'm just a pig and you're just a chicken. What can we do? And the chicken said, I got it. We can have a ham and egg breakfast for them. And the pig said, well, they, they deserve a ham and egg breakfast, but you're just making a commitment. I'm making a sacrifice. Right? Give until it hurts. That's a sacrifice. We're not just talking about money. Okay, we're talking about your time, talent, and your treasures all. But if we want to talk about money, here's what it means. If you gave money in the in the offering box today, thank you. Thank you for that. We do every week this itself. Uh, Pastor Ellen and I do every week ourselves. We thank you for that. But a sacrifice would be going, you know what, on the way to work tomorrow, I want to get that $5, $6, $8 cup of coffee. But maybe God wants me to give an extra $5 or $8 this week. So I'm going to give that. I'm going to sacrifice myself and give more. That's just a simple, easy thing. Or maybe someone will come up to you and say, we should have a ham and egg breakfast. And if you're the pig, go, that's a sacrifice. Mother Teresa says we should give until it hurts. Here's what's going to happen is, is, is what if someone comes up to you today and says, man, I've got some things going on in my life, and, and I just, can you come have a cup of coffee with me? And your schedule lo lo looks like this right here. It's full. Right? Are you going to sacrifice your time to love one another? Are you willing to sacrifice a vacation? Has anybody ever done that? For someone else? 
Maybe there's this purchase in the future, this big purchase that you've been saving up for. And maybe God rearranges it to where you got to move that, that big purchase even farther in the future because God wants you to love one another. There's this, way back in 2009, there was a suicide bomber. Anybody remember 2009? Don't that just seem like it was yesterday? It does to me. Some of y'all are young enough, you don't. Anyway, way back in 2009, there was a suicide bomber that entered this women's campus that was, a, it was an, Isla, an Islamic um, college. And he goes in there strapped with bombs all around him. And there was a janitor there that day who it was his first week on the job, this young man. He got paid a whole, a whole 60 bucks a month. He saw this guy coming in. There, there was a, a guard on duty, and he done killed the guard on duty. And the guy was going into the cafeteria where all of these Muslim ladies were gathered, girls were gathered for lunchtime. And, and as this suicide bomber made his way in, the, 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 the janitor that day, he stood in front of the doorway and wouldn't let him in. Would not let him get to those Muslim girls. So what did the suicide bomber do? He flipped a switch. He killed the janitor and about three other people that day, they said. But could you imagine how much worse it would have been had he went into the cafeteria in the midst of all those Muslim girls? Here's the kicker. This was in Pakistan. This janitor, who was first week on the job, he was a Christian. Try being a Christian and living in Pakistan. He sacrificed his life for Muslim girls. That's sacrifice. None of us will probably, and I pray and I hope that we will never have to be asked to sacrifice our life for someone. But what will we be sacrificed? Asked to sacrifice? Maybe some money to help someone out? Maybe that time when you're, once again, when your schedule looks like this, and you don't have that time, Maybe you sacrifice that. Maybe you have a talent that is an amazing talent. And you can go out in this world and make a whole lot of money. But Jesus says, I want you to do that as a ministry of the church. And you sacrifice that way. Bottom line is this. Loving one another calls for us to make a sacrifice. And we must love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you want to sacrifice, give until it hurts. Whatever way Jesus is having you do that. Because if you don't love God, if you don't love Jesus with all, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and he asks you to sacrifice, it's easy to say, man, I'm going to keep that $5 right here. I'm going to keep that five hours over here for me. It's Sunday, and the culture will be playing later on. I can't give that up. Right? Maybe, maybe, maybe you feel like God is calling you to, to sacrifice a little bit of a Sunday evening next Sunday to go hang out with a bunch of other Christians and praise God. That would be a sacrifice. <laughs> Do you love Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? If you do, I promise you he will ask you to sacrifice something. Time, talent, treasures, whatever it may be. And I hope and pray that when he does, that we can all step up to the plate and do exactly what he wants us to do. As we are loving one another, the way he wants us to love one another, which the only way I can love others is to have the love of Jesus in me. I hope this is, today has made sense to you. Has it made sense? Go like this if you kind of understand what I'm trying to get at today. Because I, I probably could have thrown my notes out the window. You ever, you ever have that happen sometimes? But, but I, I think if we get that down path, that loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, if we can do that, I'm telling you, you will have order and peace in your life. So maybe you're here today and maybe, just maybe, 
God is calling you to sacrifice yourself to love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To get that stuff that we talked about earlier, that, that selfishness, that, 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 that hate, that self-centeredness, that, that wanting revenge, all of that stuff, to get that out. And Jesus can remove that from you. Are you ready to love God with all that you have? Your heart, soul, mind, and strength. <laughs> if you are, because that's a challenge. That is a challenge to love God like that. And if you are loving God like that, man, we celebrate with you and we keep praying that you keep doing what you're doing. But there are many probably in this room and, and many watching online that, that we love God, but we don't love God with everything. We're holding something back, whatever that may be for you. If you're ready to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, then we can love others as ourselves. Then we can love one another. If we can live out the greatest commandment, Jesus will change your world. You will make an impact on those around you that you've never been able to make before. I just invite you in, in, in the quiet of this moment. Everyone just kind of close their eyes and, and bow your head. And just in the quietness of this moment, make that covenant, make that vow with God. If you dare, and just say, God, I want to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And give him every part of your life. Every part of your life. Every part of your life where he is your number one love, where you love him more than you love your spouse, more than you love your family, more than you love your career, more than you love your job, more than you love your neighbor. Because if we get that one thing down, church, that's what God wants us to do. Just pray to him right now. Just cry out to him right now in this moment. Maybe there's someone in your life right now who needs to know that they're not alone. Who needs to know that you are with them. Who needs to know that you are loving them like Jesus commands us to love one another. So I want to encourage you today. As a matter of fact, you can do it right now if you like. Get your phone out right now if you want. And just text that person. Send them a message and say, hey, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. I want you to know that you are not alone. Are you willing to sacrifice for those you love? That's what Jesus commands us to do. Father God, we come to you in this moment and I think sometimes, Father, I, I hope someone got out of what I said what you said through me Jesus let us just focus on the great command may that be with us throughout today throughout this entire week as we wake up tomorrow to a brand new week to a brand new day may we be determined to love you, Jesus, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. <laughs> Give us the strength and the courage to do the things that we need to do. Show us where you want us to make sacrifices for one another, for those who don't even love you, God, but yet we can show them the love that you have through what we do for them. 
And God, whatever you call for us to sacrifice, whether it's our, our time, our talent, or our treasures, Father, may we have the faith to do so and to trust in you. We thank you, Jesus, for how you're working in our midst. We thank you, Father, for all you've done in us and through us and around us, God. We thank you for the amazing miracles we have seen even this week. Father God, may we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it's in your mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So, go and be Jesus to someone this week. And how can you be Jesus to them? By loving Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I hope this has served you this week. If you have any questions on anything we talk about, come and talk to me as well right after the service. And hey, come and eat some lunch with us. We'll have plenty of food out there where we can eat and we can talk about and, and, and honor those who have been serving uh, serving Jesus, serving the church and the kids and the youth department. God bless the church. We love you. You are dismissed.